Yeah. Uh, are you able to see the see the slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Unfortunately, once the slide is on, I am not able to see anything uh, other than uh, my slides. But uh, hopefully, let's uh, see how it goes, right? Because uh, Google does not allow us uh, to see uh, the audience unless and until we have to put it in uh, Google. Uh, okay, let me let me see if I can do that. Because I give uh, some. Uh, at least I'll be able to see some of your uh, uh, some of you. Uh, at least uh, I can. Uh, Keep interacting, or see the response at least. Or maybe yeah, let, let's let's go ahead. I think for this time, uh, let me start off. <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, security in blockchain, and uh, uh, of course, uh, a lot of uh, uh, thought process of blockchain uh, is built on uh, what is called uh, security concepts in the sense of uh, cryptography. A lot of uh, cryptographic uh, codes are involved. Uh, something like Merkle root, uh, a nonce, uh, and a hash uh, is something which is involved. So let's let's look at uh, how it goes. Uh, so what is a blockchain? Uh, maybe I'll spend some time. Uh, these are the words when we talk about blockchain, uh, where we hear cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, uh, network, uh, protocols, transactions, uh, digital finance, you know, money exchange, uh, payments protocol, and things like that. So these are the keywords. Uh, so where did the uh, Bitcoin or where does the blockchain actually start? Okay, the, the, in fact, uh, the blockchain is the technology that we are interested in because uh, it's not only uh, currency that uh, where blockchain is used now. It is also used uh, for uh, plenty of applications. So we will uh, get introduced to that. But uh, presently, as we look at uh, uh, this was proposed by a paper uh, by Satoshi Nakamoto. And we don't know whether such a person exists. Uh, I think in 2008, he came up with a paper called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And uh, uh, in uh, January 3rd, on January 3rd, 2009, he mined his first ever block on the chain known as the Genesis block. So the first block on the blockchain is called the Genesis block. So he, he claims uh, to be, but we don't know whether uh, he or she or uh, who it is. Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto is only a, a, a namesake. Uh, we don't know whether it is his actual name also. So this is called the Genesis block and uh, the Times of uh, uh, London, the Times newspaper of London, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it speaks of the coin base of Genesis block. It uh, talks about a story of how the blockchain was created. So uh, and then uh, some 50 coins were gifted uh, as the first block was created. So as the first block is created, uh, he got 50 coins. And now, of course, uh, the, the amount is getting reduced. So uh, as of 2020, there were about uh, one, uh, one lakh merchants and vendors accepting Bitcoin as payment. So uh, the, the word uh, legal tender, uh, most of you must be hearing uh, during the uh, demonetization period, we declared or the government of India declared uh, that uh, rupees 1000 rupee note is uh, not a uh, uh, legal tender. So in a similar sense, Bitcoin is not a legal tender in India as on date, but uh, many companies online, uh, they accept Bitcoin as a payment. And of course, if you look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin became quite popular uh, when uh, we talked about uh, the attack called uh, which, which happened, which uh, encrypted a lot of uh, systems. Uh, you must be remembering and if you want to uh, decrypt your system, you need to pay in Bitcoins. So that way as Bitcoin became very popular. So the attack was called WannaCry uh, and WannaCry was an online attack. If you are connected to the internet, it comes in and uh, encrypts your systems. And once all the systems are encrypted, uh, you can't open them and you can't see what is the content there. So uh, and then the, you would get an email which would say that if you pay in bitcoins, you will decrypt it. And uh, the, many companies have paid the money and uh, got them decrypted. But after some time, the attack was uh, neutralized and uh, the problem was solved. But uh, it, it created a very good interest on Bitcoin. And uh, Bitcoin is basically based on solving an encryption formula, which requires extreme amounts of computing power. So uh, it's, it's, it's a mechanism. Maybe I will show you in a, in a sample simulated uh, uh, program. We, can, we will try to do that and see how, we, how a Bitcoin can be created and uh, uh, what a, how the blocks are created in the blockchain. Uh, so uh, as you understand the word blockchain, it talks about uh, chains, which are a chain of blocks. 
So that's all. Uh, blockchain is nothing but a chain of blocks, and the blocks are connected one to the other. The next block is having a lot of information which is connected to the previous block. It's like a link chain, a link list kind of a thing. So uh, that's very easy to understand, right? Uh, so uh, each time you solve the formula, and then uh, the motivation to create more blocks is because you get some free bitcoins, right? And uh, uh, the calculation is that about 21 million bitcoins will ever exist. And about 80% of the bitcoins are already uh, have been mined. So, uh, so uh, that's all that those many blocks only can be created. Uh, how to extend the blockchain can be another uh, proposal. So, if you uh, get some, uh, if you want to get some bitcoins, you can buy it uh, uh, using uh, fiat currency. That is, uh, you you can give rupees, uh, go and uh, pay in a bitcoin exchange or pay in dollars, and then you can get some bitcoins. You can have some friend who is having a Bitcoin, you can transfer it, uh, you can get it transferred to your uh, this thing or you can try to mine a Bitcoin, mine a Bitcoin, uh, you try to solve the cryptographic challenge and then if you solve it first, uh, you will be able to get it. So uh, a block is created every uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So the next block, you have 15 minutes time once this block is created. Uh, and then you have 15 minutes time to block uh, to create the next block and then uh, it's about uh, you know 35 million uh, uh, terahertz per cycle uh, per second and then you get about 6.25 uh, bitcoin transactions uh, earlier it was 12.5 bitcoins till uh, may uh, after may it has reduced to 6.25 earlier it was 50 50 became 25 25 became 12.5 12.5 has become now uh, 6.25 every two three years i think uh, this amount will be reduced next to be 3.125 bitcoins you will get per uh, this thing so uh, something like uh, if you look at uh, uh, you know something like uh, uh, you know huge amount of money uh, because it is about uh, 4000 uh, dollars is that is what is the amount uh, uh, presently one Bitcoin. So if you look at six Bitcoins for $25,000, so that's huge money uh, for every block. So uh, this is how it looks like. You can, uh, if you want to look at the present Bitcoin blockchain, blockchain is the uh, main uh, Bitcoin ledger. Uh, we will try to look at uh, what is a ledger also. We'll come to understand that. So, uh, so this is how the things looks like. So uh, uh, this, this, this was clocked on uh, October, uh, uh, 35 uh, sorry august 31st uh, so uh, the blocks they were created were 646148 this is a live uh, ledger which anybody can see uh, number of transactions which are logged in it and then uh, the size and uh, the size in bytes in the you know the transactions which are created and the reward that has been given okay as uh, for that so 6.25 so uh, earlier in fact if you look at uh, why uh, blockchains were created uh, they were created so that I could save on the transaction fee. I will not uh, charge any money for uh, transferring. So as of now, uh, when, when we look at a, a blockchain uh, block, it looks something like this. So number of confirmations which are referring to this block. So uh, I will speak about what these confirmations are in a little bit from now. Number of transactions which are included are 604. Okay, the, uh, these are the block hash. This is where the cryptography comes in. Uh, 19 preceding zeros must be there so and before the hash value right so you should find out uh, so uh, when you try to create uh, the next block is not there uh, the previous block hash uh, the present block hash of this block this is the block hash uh, that is there it is same as here so this is the block hash the previous block hash also has 19 preceding zeros the next block hash is what you have to create and there is something which is called a Merkle root of the transactions arranged in a data structure called Merkle tree. Uh, this is the hash of its root. Okay, so this is the Merkle root hash. So all these are included in the uh, header of it, and the transactions are included. And nonce is something which is to be calculated. And then who has created it? It was created by ant pool. Uh, actually, I'll just explain what the pools are a little later. Uh, so this is how a ledger looks like. This is how a transaction looks like. So. Uh, these are some addresses. These are usually 32 bit, uh, 31 bit addresses. Uh, these are all addresses of uh, to whom the blockchain was uh, uh, the input Bitcoin addresses, sending Bitcoins. All these are making transactions. These are the amount of transactions, amount of Bitcoins you can. Uh, you don't have to give the Bitcoin in ones and twos. You can give it in in bits. You know there are uh, up to thousand, up to million bits you can create, uh, and then you can send that uh, transaction, and then. Uh, who is receiving those uh, bitcoins these are the transaction addresses these are the 
from address and this is the two address you can combine multiple of these and send it to one address and things like that and then uh, to to do this okay you have what is called uh, the transaction uh, charges earlier this was not there uh, but now they have added because otherwise blockchain won't uh, submit so amount of bitcoins received when this block is created so these bitcoins were created so that is how a, a ledger looks like you can go to uh, some of these websites like blockchain.info and blockexplorer.com and then you can quickly look at uh, uh, these uh, changes right so that is something which you can look at so uh, a bitcoin is gaining value first bitcoin uh, transfer from satoshi nakamoto to his friend hal finney uh, but in may 2010 uh, uh, laszlo hanses purchased dollar 25 worth of pizza for 10,000 BTC, that was uh, 10 years ago. Uh, then uh, there was uh, Mount Cox, which was created, which was the uh, Bitcoin exchange. But then uh, uh, they lost uh, some of these Bitcoins in a theft because uh, you can keep it in an exchange. And uh, from the exchange, if somebody has sold, right, he, he they lost so many Bitcoins. So once they lose so many Bitcoins, uh, they, they became bankrupt. So I think these are all uh, financial frauds which can happen even on a Bitcoin. So basically the Bitcoin was set up uh, basically as a means of trying to make payments which were uh, uh, in a different uh, mode, right? So you have what is called a Silk Road. Earlier the Silk Road was where, uh, you know, uh, people used to travel uh, and uh, sell a lot of uh, important uh, these things. Uh, in the uh, ancient times, uh, the Silk Road was where uh, people used to sell uh, precious items and then make a lot of money but the silk road uh, here now uh, 2011 if we talk about it is the anonymous ebay of trucks which which basically used uh, uh, tor and uh, payments using bitcoin so you could buy a lot of uh, these drugs like uh, you know some of these things which give you uh, the the high uh, so those drugs and all can be purchased you can't go and uh, purchase these uh, directly uh, so what you need is uh, you need to purchase them and maybe uh, pornography uh, and a lot of these, you know, can be purchased and a lot of, uh, uh, you know, pirated software can be purchased, all these things. So they, they call down what is called the Silk Route. So two years they flourished, but the FBI found out uh, and uh, traced it and then they found out and they closed the uh, Silk Route, right? But uh, uh, December 2017, if you look at the Bitcoin price, one Bitcoin costed 13 lakhs. Uh, October 2021 Bitcoin is about 8 lakhs now. So if you look at uh, the cost that is uh, going uh, in October, it is uh, running to around uh, more than $10,000, around $12,000 maybe. Uh, so that is what it is uh, in December 2017. It was you know, the highest Bitcoin value, about uh, 18, uh, 17, 17,000 plus dollars. That was uh, 13 lakh rupee, one Bitcoin. So if you had 10 Bitcoins, you are a, uh, you are a, uh, you know, Karodapati, you can think of, so that, that was uh, good enough. So October 9th, uh, yes, uh, today's uh, time it is uh, 7.96 lakhs, dollars 10,000, so roughly around uh, uh, 700 and uh, around 8 lakhs, that is the cost as on date. So that is something, if you have one Bitcoin, you have 8 lakh rupee. Of course, uh, Bitcoins are basically used as a stock, so you can buy 10 Bitcoins now and then you can sell it later when you need money. So people are uh, doing you know, a lot of, and surprisingly, in, in uh, sitting in Jaipur, uh, we have uh, Bitcoin exchanges, we have people selling and buying Bitcoins. So uh, they don't know uh, what is the technical implications of a Bitcoin, but they want to actually explore the uh, the improving the value so they, they'll uh, and then there are many alternate coins to bitcoin which have come uh, one of the popular thing is ethereum uh, you have ripple which has also come so these two are very popular uh, bitcoins uh, of course litecoin has come dash has come zcash has come and then obviously our own uh, you can say lakshmi coin and in fact lakshmi coin was released uh, in, a, in, a, in a function in Jaipur itself. Jaipur was the hub where uh, this uh, Lakshmi coin was created, right? So these are uh, different uh, uh, Bitcoins. So why does Bitcoin matter for us, right? It is the uh, first ever cryptocurrency. And in fact, as a security expert, uh, what is Bitcoin to me? Of course, security issues in Bitcoin is something which I will uh, share towards the end. But Bitcoin itself or blockchain itself is a very security related problem because uh, it is cryptocurrency. And it uses a lot of cryptography, which is uh, purely digital and it is not controlled by any central entity. Uh, so the basic idea is uh, it doesn't involve any uh, central identity, central entity, because uh, uh, as you see, if you are looking at uh, uh, sending money uh, to another country or sending money to any of your friends, uh, you can uh, use uh, any of these uh, uh, 
transactions uh, and then uh, using banks uh, they have a, a ledger so banks maintain a ledger and then you send the money and your friend receives the money you can use a demand draft you can uh, do an online uh, internet banking transaction you know you can do neft or imps but all of them do they take some charge from you and then they deposit uh, in those respective banks of your friends so that is one thing but uh, another thing is uh, when blockchain was uh, created the bitcoins were transferred without any charge and in fact when you make any transactions you know uh, inter uh, income tax department uh, asks for your bank accounts all the active bank accounts why do, why do they act, uh, ask all your active bank accounts because they realize that uh, you have some money uh, wherever transactions are happening they can track and they can they can see if there are some big transactions which have happened they can easily find it out so uh, so the best thing that they looked at was uh, uh, to uh, control this and uh, get uh, uh, get get access to your uh, financial transactions but if you are using bitcoins uh, these transactions are what is available in a public ledger that means anybody can see it but obviously nobody will be able to know your name so everybody can see the transactions that's wonderful but nobody can uh, realize uh, the name uh, that is there you, you are only recognized by a cryptographic code or or a hash of your address or your address which is there in in a 31 bit number which cannot be easily decoded right and, and even if it decoded you don't know who the person uh, it is so that is how it is it is anonymous uh, but at the same time public so the ledger is public the transactions are public who is sending money to whom is public but uh, who is that person he is not uh, available right so it also uh, solves the double spending issue i have a i have a money uh, i cannot pay two people uh, at the same time i cannot bluff it because it is not possible to do double spending double spending is uh, i try to make payments to two people at the same time uh, and then uh, try to get away with it but it is not possible only one transaction will get uh, accepted and one will not get uh, accepted so that is something so it's basically a peer to peer network uh, transactions are directly between users there is no intermediary uh, and uh, this is an advantage because a very less transaction fee you can think of now earlier it was zero now the transaction fee is slightly placed and it is definitely less than if you're wanting to send money to us or you want to receive money from united states uh, a lot of money is paid as uh, an exchange uh, through Zoom or through Western Union money transfer or any of the banks. When you do a SWIFT code transfer, uh, a lot of money is uh, charged. Uh, but then uh, Bitcoins, they charge very less. Uh, and the Hawala route also, uh, it is charged very less. But then uh, there is, it's a kind of a Hawala which is created. Many of you must have read the Hawala. Uh, somebody in the US pays to somebody in the US itself and somebody in India pays you the money. So, because they have these transactions which are managed, so uh, they don't have to actually do a transfer. Uh, they will they will get the money there and they will get the money here and they will maintain some accounts. So that's how. So somebody wants to send money to US also, we use the Kavala and in between these people are the commission. So transactions recorded as block in uh, public ledger is called the blockchain. So now let me uh, introduce what is uh, blockchain. Blockchain is basically uh, storing data uh, that multiple parties uh, and uh, that ensures uh, data integrity. So uh, the data is stored, the public ledger is open, everybody can see, uh, but nobody can make any false uh, this thing. So how is, how is a distributed ledger? Uh, is a shared database uh, and uh, this is available. Uh, can I download the blockchain? Yes, you can download the entire blockchain. You can see all the transactions from the Genesis block, Satoshi's block till now. Uh, you can see who has sent to whom, but you don't know who is who. That is the only problem. But otherwise, you can see all the transactions. As of now, if you download the entire data, it will be somewhere around 400 GB of data, uh, entire blockchain. And you can set up your own node and then you can try to uh, mine your new block. I will uh, show you in slight uh, few minutes how this can be done. Uh, everyone holds a copy of the entire log history of transactions. That's what I'm mentioning about 400 GB of data, maybe a little more now. Uh, it is immutable. It can't be changed because a lot of people are having a copy of it. In between, I cannot say, okay, I will remove these five locks and let us start a new blockchain. I cannot do that because a copy of the blockchain is maintained by so many people and it is time stamped. So once the block is created and a timestamp is given, uh, the new blocks that are getting added will be having a different timestamp. So uh, this is the simple uh, concepts like as I try to introduce, I will show you a little later. Uh, maybe I will encourage you sometime to visit this site andersbrownworth.com blockchain. I will uh, use the same uh, example to show you uh, uh, the screen and then uh, I will show you the demonstration. 
uh, let me cover some important concepts and let me come back to this site and show you a simulated version of a blockchain right so first what you need is a uh, understanding of uh, hashing so uh, of course i would love to explain what is hashing but uh, let me leave it so if there is any any text that is there a hash of the text is generated so uh, uh, it's a simple hash function uh, you can try to look up any cryptography book you will understand what is hashing uh, i because of uh, lack of paucity of time i'm uh, rushing through uh, next is the block uh, now the block contains a block header and a list of transactions so it contains a cryptographic hash of the previous block there is a timestamp and there is a transaction data this is what is transaction data the block header will contain a cryptographic hash of the previous block and a timestamp now how does it look like it looks like this okay uh, there is a block header there is a previous block hash that belongs to the previous block we have a nonce value and a merkle root right and the block id the block id is the hash of the block header a hash of the block header will give you the block id which is built on the previous block hash and the merkle root and the nonce so based on that you get uh, this value so the merkle root what is a merkle root merkle root combines the hash values of the transactions together until there is a singular root that is what is called the merkle tree root hash a uh, lot of literature is there on merkle root Uh, so please uh, you can just uh, go and read through and i i don't think it'll take much time uh, but uh, for me uh, i will just say that this is what merkle root is it combines the hash values of the transactions together until there is uh, it keep on adding 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 and finally you get a single root that is what is called the merkle tree root hash uh, maybe you can look at some look up some examples in in, in on the internet uh, but it's an effective me mechanism to summarize transactions in a block It, that means what you are taking different transactions are there but the different transactions they have their individual hash values and you keep on combining the hash values so that finally you get a singular uh, root for the whole uh, whole of the tree uh, so that is what is called the merkle tree root hash so okay so the very uh, this helps us to summarize the transactions verify the presence of a transaction in a block and provide immutability of transactions that means you can't change those transactions because the merkle root hash will not match if any change is made to any transaction so that is the importance of merkle root and this is uh, these concepts are the things which actually improve the uh, the thing so this is how it happens so the different data are there and then you take the hash values of these and then you combine the hash values so h0 h1 becomes h4 h2 h3 becomes h5 h5 and h4 are combined to become the root so the merkle root gets that value so any any change in any of these data will affect the root value so if these are not allowed so these are, these are fixed so that the root value is uh, kept in uh, unity right so this is how a, a sample block will look like uh, so there you have the data transactions you have a, a hash value and then you have a nonce uh, so uh, what is mining if i try to understand this is how a block block looks like so the block header as a, a block number and a block uh, nonce then some transactions and then you have the hash value and then you actually uh, can mine other thing so uh, what is mining mining is whenever you are adding a new block uh, the process is called mining so you mine the new block mining is uh, trying to dig for bitcoins uh, how do you dig for bitcoins uh, it is not uh, physical digging so it is uh, logical digging or uh, you know uh, what is called software digging or virtual digging uh, so what you try to do is you create a new block if you create a new block you mine Uh, the coins right so what you need to do is you need to verify uh, by solving a computationally difficult what is called proof of work puzzle uh, uh, okay so you try to uh, uh, understand this so it involves brute force computations what you need uh, is uh, you need to scan for a value called the nonce uh, but when the hash results in a hash beginning with a number of zeros right so that is what is proof of work uh, uh, algorithm uh, that they call or the consensus algorithm that they say proof of work algorithm and the proof of state which also comes in late later proof of stake so this is how the mining happens so when you mine it so this is how it looks like so let me uh, take you through that uh, the that website and let me show you uh, some sample examples so it will go it will take me to a website i'll share that website now uh, let me open that it's opening Yeah. <clears throat> so 
So are you able to see the screen? Hello? Are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, I am now showing the blockchain demo. Are you able to see the hash value here? Uh, shall I increase the size? Right? Are you able to see the hash value? Now, just imagine this value here. See the value here as I type something here. Okay, I type my name. Just I type one word, P, it changed. If I type I, it changes, L, L, I. So, uh, as I keep changing, right? So, uh, if I type uh, blockchain, so for every transaction, this hash value keeps changing, right? So this is what is uh, SHA algorithm, secure hash algorithm 256, and there's a 512 algorithm also. The blockchain uses uh, 256, right? Then you go, uh, please uh, note this address. Uh, I will share with you it's there on the slides also uh, so that you can see the blockchain uh, demo, right? So this is how a block looks like, right? So let me reduce this so that you are able to clearly see it, okay? So this is how a block looks like, right? Now what has happened is, uh, if you see here, there are four zeros to start with. This is a simulated version. Uh, the live blockchain has 19 zeros to start with. So what happens is, I have to create, uh, whenever I add the transactions, now you see this is green in color because this is perfectly uh, uh, monitored and then uh, this is a meeting. So let us say I have a transaction here. So what has happened if I type the transaction, some transaction or uh, some transfer value, if nothing is there, the color is green. But if I make some changes, let us say, uh, uh, Pili is sending some hundred dollars to somebody. Okay, I make some transaction like this. So once I add the transaction value here or some, some uh, transaction here, the hash value changes. So first four zeros should come because in a simulated version, in an actual version, the 19 values should come. So what should I do? I should change the value of this nonce and check whether one is okay, no, one is not okay, two is okay, no, three is okay, no, four is okay, no, like that. So I keep on. So that process is what is called the mining. So now when I mine it, I, I will get a nonce value here, which will satisfy these four zeros here and the transaction can be added and it will be a valid. So let me start the process of mining. So mining is going on now and mining has found that 34703 is a nonce which will satisfy the first four zeros. The hash will have the first four zeros and this transaction is added. So this is how it has. So all the transactions do come in. Then I calculate a nonce value to satisfy this bar. And then I can say that this block is uh, now correct. So this was the Genesis block in the, in the first sense when Satoshi Nakamoto created. Now these blocks are created. So if we move to what is called blockchain blockchain has something like this. The Genesis block does not have a previous because the left side of a linked list, the first node of a linked list, the left side is uh, of a doubly linked list, the left side node is, uh, is zeros kind of. So there's a previous node which is zero, the hash is there. This hash is actually copied here and this hash is copied in the next block, right? And, and then the nonce values are maintained. So this is how uh, a blockchain looks like. So a blockchain is created like this. Let us say if I want to add a transaction here, so what happens if I, if I say something here, so all the blockchains will get, so any change I make in any one of that, so if, if I make a change here, the, the sequence following that will be changed. But if I remove this, this is okay. If I make a change here, hello, then, then uh, these things get, these are okay, but from here, the next uh, successive uh, blocks are all affected. So this is how it goes on. So uh, now, whenever I want to make any, any change, I have to ensure that uh, those transactions are modified. So let us say if I make Billy uh, dollar uh, hundred, what I can do is I can mine it so that this becomes normal, right? But this doesn't become normal. So what I have to do again, I have to mine this also individually so that it becomes, so the nonce values are each time uh, looked at. So this is what uh, a blockchain looks like. Now a distributed blockchain, now this blockchain is easy. If I have a blockchain, single copy of the blockchain, I can easily make some changes. So I can make a change in two or three and like that, but that is not possible because uh, the blockchain is distributed. Distributed in the sense, as you see, it has different people have the same copy, right? Here I've taken the examples of three people, right? PRA, PRB, PRC. PRA has, uh, note these values, 11316 and 35230. Uh, if you remember, 
the same things 11316 and 35230 if you go down it is the same 11316 and 35230 so uh, this this can be a blockchain right so now if i make a change here right and uh, uh, let us say if i want to make dollar 100 transaction here right so i can okay i can make a change here right and i can make a change here right so and i say okay this is correct uh, pilli has made a transactions so 23890 but uh, these two people won't agree they say no 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 this blockchain is not correct because we don't agree with you so blockchain is a distributed trust management mechanism right it is a distributed trust management mechanism and hence uh, it is easily uh, not possible so uh, what can be added is transactions like this so these transactions are there and these transactions are there across the blockchain right if you go on for more nodes also uh, you can have more nodes and then each time the transactions are made like this so you can keep on going like this so this is how a blockchain is created and and peers of that blockchain are created so maybe if you want to make a transaction change here let us say i make uh, this change like this uh, i want to make a small change but uh, this is not possible because it will not be accepted this 97.67 but if i make it 97.6 uh, it won't agree all these are uh, invalidated okay if i validate this uh, i can validate it and find out a new blockchain value and i can get uh, the the hash value co corrected here but the other peers won't agree right so that is the biggest change any any transaction change that i want to make uh, is not possible so these are uh, something so this has been uh, this this has been mined but these are all invalidated right and uh, these people won't agree the remaining two people say it is 97.67 and hence 97.60 is not agreed right so that is what uh, it happens and then you have what is called a coinbase also so you can make uh, transactions coinbase is whenever the block is created uh, the the some of the bitcoins are added uh, so this is the first major transaction that that happens whenever there is a, uh, a new uh, blockchain is created so some uh, some money is uh, transferred to uh, the person maybe in this case it is anders anders uh, gets uh, 100 dollars uh, as a sample this is a simulation but now it is 6.25 bitcoins here uh, we are mentioning in dollars but it is actually 6.25 bitcoins 6.25 bitcoins are transferred to and the whoever creates the block he gets that money so this is a blockchain demo uh, of course you will also have a, a interesting youtube video uh, you can uh, look at that also and i think uh, uh, that actually explains and, and in fact when i looked at uh, uh, this aspect of uh, uh, trying to uh, look at this example it was easy for me uh, to understand the concept of blockchain uh, understand how the blockchain uh, proceeds and how the blockchain can uh, actually uh, facilitate the transfer uh, of money right so how a blockchain is created and all now uh, i would uh, definitely challenge you uh, to set up a blockchain how can how can we set up a blockchain it's not very difficult of course mining uh, may need a lot of resources uh, but mining writing a mining algorithm uh, trying to find out how i can uh, mine a data is not difficult uh, but at least you can set up and see the present blockchain how it runs and the alternate mechanisms ethereum you can set up an ethereum and you can uh, manage both these things so these two things are uh, are a choice which you can uh, try to make it and this is very uh, challenging and interesting and uh, uh, here in mnit we have set up uh, a bitcoin core we have set up an ethereum core and uh, we have we have we are running and we have tried to create a smart contract and uh, uh, of course not not much has been accomplished because the focus is on security aspects not on the blockchain functioning per se uh, but but people who want to uh, understand how blockchain works and how I can do it, so that is uh, where. Uh, but if I really want to get into mining, uh, of course, there's a lot of money uh, which gets involved, but a lot of huge computation is required. As I will share with you, a lot of technology changes have happened. Earlier, people used to put multiple, uh, uh, if you have uh, attended my previous lecture on uh, cloud computing, uh, the cluster of systems were used. Later, a grid of systems were used. Later, uh, uh, you know, GPUs were used. Uh, the graphical processing units, the NVIDIA uh, graphic uh, graphical processing units they have uh, worked on. And uh, a lot of input uh, is uh, put into these things. So let me continue with uh, what I was uh, uh, dealing with earlier. Uh, the powerpoint slides okay so we have looked at uh, some of these uh, block blockchain and uh, how the mining process works is you download the entire uh, bitcoin blockchain verify the incoming transactions create a block 
uh, very easy to create a blog because you have all those values. But uh, the most important thing is find the nonce value, finding the valid nonce value, which satisfies a particular hash value, uh, which begins with uh, 19 uh, zeros. So finding that nonce value is very important. Once you find the nonce value, you broadcast your block and then you get the uh, profit of that six, uh, six bitcoins. So once you have the six bitcoins, you go to a Bitcoin exchange, sell them, get the money. Uh, and then you can do whatever you want and real real money right so what what actually happens in the uh, in these things so what you do you verify if all the transactions are uh, valid so once the transactions appear to be valid you bundle the transactions into a block select the header of the most recent block insert into the new block as a hash then solve the proof of work problems P proof of work problem is to find the nonce value which satisfies the hash value that, that's the challenge when the solution is found the new block is added to the local uh, blockchain and propagated to the network so it confirms the uh, transactions in a trustful manager uh, trustful manner when enough computational power is de devoted to uh, get that block so this is a slightly uh, difficult challenge so mining a, a block is difficult because sh 256 hash of a block header must be lower than or equal to the target what is the target target starts with 19 zeros so you must get a value which is uh, having uh, less than 19 zeros. So you have to find out a nonce till you get that uh, 19 zeros uh, to begin with, right? So uh, when you propose a new block, you have to look at the header of the uh, previous block. You have to get the nonce. You have to combine them. You guess a nonce and you have to combine them and take the hash number and check whether the hash is less than the target value. If it is less than the target value, then you can compare it and then you can get it solved. Otherwise, you go back you find out a different nonce value and then combine it with the hash, previous hash, and then again try to get a new hash number, check whether it is less than the target value. If it is yes, uh, more than the target value, uh, so obviously what you can try to do is you can uh, you can say that a proof of uh, work uh, problem is solved and you get a mining reward. So uh, this process goes on, once this, my, once this block is solved, you go to the next block, right? So uh, initially when Satoshi Nakamoto proposed, uh, one CPU could get one vote. So over a period of time, miners adopted uh, multiple clusters or GPUs and FPGA programming and ASICs. Uh, and some of you must be wondering what ASIC is. What is ASIC? ASIC has this IC. So IC is nothing but an integrated circuit. AS stands for application specific. Uh, of, of course, FPGA, uh, some of the uh, electronics people would know fully programmable uh, uh, graphical array so fpgas are also used they you can program a, a, a hardware and uh, then you can uh, run it it will be faster uh, than the code running in the gpu uh, and the cpu and then finally application specific ic's uh, the whole mining process can be uh, incorporated as an application and that application uh, specific ic is created so the ic doesn't do anything else except doing mining so it takes a value it takes a value and then calculates a value which is less than the hash so that is what uh, is to be done. So when Bitcoin was first released, one could mine 100 Bitcoins a day using CPUs, but now uh, ASICs are used. And then uh, people have developed what is called, uh, ASIC is a microchip specifically designed to execute a hashing algorithm as quickly as possible. And uh, ASIC costs a significant amount of money uh, in electricity bills because uh, ASIC manufacturing is also very difficult. And ASIC, uh, uh, you know, uh, ASIC execution consumes a lot of uh, electricity right so and then uh, these days uh, because again uh, uh, resources are uh, crunch so what has happened miners are coming together instead of fighting against one another they are saying okay 50 of us let us put our resources together and crack the solution right so they are uh, pooling together so that is where the ant pool if you have remembered the first uh, uh, block that we discussed ant pool was mentioned so the ant pool is a pool of people who have come together and then they are pooling uh, they are mining uh, and then they share the rewards in proportion to their uh, computing power that they give in. Uh, and then uh, ASICs uh, inevitably leads to powerful mining farms taking over huge percentage of the hash rate and hence people started developing what is called ASIC resistant mining algorithms. One of my uh, MTech student has uh, worked on this uh, called HashCash uh, which was a proposal which was made which is available in uh, uh, GitHub. There is a proof of stake which is for Ethereum. Uh, this is also available on uh, called Casper. They both are available on GitHub. Uh, please look at these codes. And uh, people have started uh, developing mining algorithms. So many mining algorithms are there. And then this ASIC resistance mining algorithm. So they're making mining more difficult. So new Bitcoins, when they're introduced, they are ensuring that the technology will not help. Pure cryptography will help. So here, uh, CPU, GPU, ASIC will help. 
to do the things faster your technology mind is not uh, your logic need not be very popular but here uh, as you look at uh, we are developing a sick resistant mining which will uh, give things better so this is something which has uh, their uh, equihash uh, ethash which was basically used for old uh, ethereum and also randomx which is adopted by monero a cryptocurrency so these are all things which are coming up and then people have also have uh, moved to something which is called proof of stake mining algorithm uh, miners are chosen depending on the relative value of coins held in the miners wallet and the length of the time that a miner has held coins in their wallet so basically that is how the a stake of his is calculated more stake a user has the more likely it will want the system to succeed thus expecting honest behavior so he has earned more he has mined more so because he has more stake so he is given more preference so that is what is proof of stake mining algorithm ethereum uh, 2.0 uses proof of stake blockchain and uh, uh, they also use what is called shard chains so uh, it is still uh, very 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 new uh, algorithm proof of stake ethereum has 2.0 has launched this and uh, phase zero testing is rolled out in september 2020 just a uh, couple of days ago so please look for shard chains so these are some uh, latest things which are happening uh, and uh, it is really mind blowing if you take up any technology uh, many times uh, i am uh, surprised how how many ideas people are getting and what are all people doing and actually if you ask me we are all sleeping uh, in india uh, we are we are way behind but a lot of uh, our uh, indian minds maybe they are working hard in uh, uh, in abroad countries Uh, they have gone there, uh, but then uh, the challenge about eighty people are listening to my lecture now. Uh, I want to challenge you. It it's not very difficult. Of course, the resources may be a a difficult choice, but the algorithms, the crypto, the 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 uh, what do you call the hashing, uh, some of these methods, uh, I think uh, they are very easy to catch. And I think uh, you should, uh, we all should uh, keep working. We should not be afraid. You know, one of the reasons why Indian government is not able to uh, approve uh, bitcoins as legal tender. because if it approves it as legal tender uh, it has to defend and why is it not able to defend why government of india is not able to defend bitcoins because uh, we are not very strong in cryptography if if uh, we had good cryptographic engineers we could have the central uh, bank of india that is the reserve bank of india to actually approve bitcoins and then if there is a problem uh, somebody has lost bitcoins or something then indian government will be responsible to ensure that his money which was stolen or which was lost or which corrupted will come back to him so uh, it's because the technology is not there with us we are not wanting to take that risk rather than just one blockchain ethereum will become many blockchains all running in parallel so this is this is a concept which is there so that you can increase the number of transactions ethereum can handle per second you can have uh, what is called shard chains you know uh, divided parallel chains which can run in parallel instead of a single blockchain you will have multiple uh, blockchains running at the same time so uh, the the most important thing is you can't change data in transactions uh, that is the secret of blockchain so you have what is called an avalanche effect if you change one uh, one block you have to change all the blocks in all the uh, you know blockchains which are available and it is near 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 to impossible uh, you you have no way to change that and that is what makes blockchain the strongest uh, trust uh, factor right a slight change in input can cause significant and unpredicted change in output which is which cannot be reversed so hence it is the biggest issue so uh, as each block each change in data in a transaction will result in a change in the hash and each change in the hash of the block will change in the hash of the next block so obviously any small change will affect the whole lot so uh, this is what we discussed already so as you make one change Uh, so then immediately uh, the whole things get uh, affected uh, so and then this is a double uh, double uh, spending uh, nadir and brian uh, they they want to be paid by gillian uh, but then it is not possible because uh, gillian can either pay nadir or brian if he has only 10 bitcoins right so uh, double spending the transaction which gets the maximum number of confirmations on the network will be included in the blockchain so you have uh, this buyer has sold to seller a has given some bitcoins and then these bitcoins are uh, added so uh, six uh, more blocks are added into that uh, blockchain so that gets accepted so the transaction to seller a is gets accepted if he sends the same blockchain to seller b because the blocks do not get extended because the transaction is not found valid after some time only one block is there so this is uh, this is abandoned 
because it is abandoned this is becomes rejected so seller b's transaction gets rejected so a single block bitcoin can either be given to seller a or to seller b and only one transaction will be logged another major problem is 51% uh, attack and uh, this is uh, the security aspects of blockchain we have entered so the honest majority is uh, if an adversary controls 50% of the total network hash power so what happens if uh, he has to approve six transactions he can get uh, many of his friends are having the total network hash power and all of them are interacting maybe on a blockchain or maybe another uh, chatting mechanism or whatsapp or something and whenever the chain is behind uh, the honest network chain she will always be able to catch up and outproduce the honest miners so some serious people are working but they are not in touch with one another but uh, here you have 50 50% of the people who are more to all so what you can try to do is you can try to dominate and make your own uh, network uh, uh, prominent and then you can take it so that is something which can uh, be done so this is uh, the 50% 51% attack in blockchain the honest majority assumption so what happens there are a lot of people who are working so uh, if you can create a network you know this person is honest these people are honest but here you have these uh, five six people who are working on the network they are creating a malicious activity they are having uh, this red color is the general transactions which are happening but there is some other interactions which are happening in green color and blue color so they are able to make all those transactions and they are able to communicate and break the transaction so some people are uh, somebody is nick but actually is acting like a gillan uh, gloria is also acting like gillan so so these people all get confused what is actually happening so in that sense uh, a 51% attack can be happening on blockchain so it is extremely expensive but uh, it gets much uh, cheaper quickly for newer blockchain applications uh, it is slightly difficult but uh, research has demonstrated that uh, uh, you know you you could uh, take at least a dollar 1.5 million to execute a 51% attack with a market cap of dollar 2 billion so almost if you want to earn 2 billion you have to spend 1.5 million uh, i think it's not really worth it so people are doing the honest way uh, to do it and then they they're also uh, sometimes you can try to do what is called a block withholding attack a selfish mining attack selfish miners what do they do they mine on their private chain and the honest miners mine on the public chain and uh, the selfish miners publish their blocks when the length of the private chain is equal to length of the public chain so suddenly what happens the selfish miners things get approved and uh, the public chain gets uh, disapproved so what happens the honest miners who have actually worked hard solved the problems they they did not they do not get the reward because the selfish miners have blocked the uh, blocked their mines and they have not published they have kept it but uh, when the length is increased when they have got a bigger length so suddenly they added to the blockchain so that blockchain becomes uh, uh, the the legal one or the official one so all those people who have uh, generated their blocks and they worked hard uh, and suddenly they they see that uh, their blocks are all uh, disabled or what what you call uh, it is uh, not considered legal so they lose lot of money so this is how uh, selfish mining attacks can happen so uh, they are searching for new blocks honest miner are working on the public chain but uh, the uh, selfish miners are keeping uh, on this so what has happened once these these things are keep on adding but they are not published if they are published they come onto the blockchain but they are not coming onto the blockchain so after some time what happens when the number of blocks in this get increased so what happens is after some time it gets published so this block gets uh, gets uh, rejected so uh, they have actually worked hard and uh, the honest miner has added it but uh, the selfish miners have created a bigger chain so this chain gets accepted this block gets rejected the, the blockchain becomes moves in this direction so the adversary can manage like this a selfish uh, mining attacks similarly you have a ddos attack which can happen on the blockchain so no or minimal adverse effect due to the distributed network so though the ddos attack happens but it is there but multiple ddos attacks can be uh, what do you, what can happen is a competing miners effectively taking them out of the network and increasing the malicious miners effective hash rate so the hash rate also keeps changing as uh, the blockchain progresses uh, so what happens if you have a ddos attack so uh, the competitive miners are taken out of the network uh, because uh, they don't get the correct information because of the ddos attack and uh, the honest miners also waste their time in verifying fake transactions you can put lot of uh, uh, fake transactions as a ddos attack and then you uh, you you lose a chance of mining the attack so that is our uh, ddos attack so when you look at an eclipse attack uh, a group of malicious users can filter the 
victim's view of the blockchain by controlling all its incoming and outgoing connection so you try to create an eclipse that is a victim is trying to find out what is happening in the blockchain but uh, the attacker node is sitting in between and he is giving a different picture so what has happened it's like an eclipse right the sun the moon and the earth right so the moon actually covers the whole earth so the sun is not able to see so whatever whatever the moon is showing the sun believes something like that right so you can have an eclipse attack on the blockchain you give the wrong information the isolate uh, the uh, this isolates the victim from the rest of the uh, network in the true picture of the blockchain so here you cut it out and then whatever this is saying you will believe and this can give the wrong information so the malicious node gives the wrong information right he gives a uh, old data while this data is all updated and this is also updated but it gives the wrong data to them and then they lose out there can be privacy attacks uh, this is a bigger issue uh, more than security attacks which are very not very successful the ddos attacks are not successful uh, security attacks are not successful but the privacy attacks can be uh, successful because what you can try to do is uh, you can do uh, uh, big data analytics about 400 gb of data is not huge and then you can at least create uh, uh, links of people who are transferring to whom on a regular basis and then who is actually mining uh, a lot of these things because these addresses are anyway unique right so a blockchain network is considered anonymous as each user is identified by address only and can generate of course you can generate the proxies you can generate different ip addresses which can represent you but still uh, maybe five or six addresses ten addresses you can generate for yourself but then still these 10 addresses can show the transactions from other people coming to you and you sending to a similar set of people a little bit of analysis can be done and you can be identified though your name and address cannot be identified but you will know some a is transferring to some b c d you know these people are regularly having transactions that is a privacy issue right on the blockchain uh, as blockchain is replicated at each node observer can use the transaction history to find the topology of the network the pattern of transactions the pattern of users interaction uh, many times uh, two political leaders have talked what they talked is not important they have talked itself that also like uh, if uh, uh, let us say prime minister narendra modi ji talks to donald trump uh, the us president right so that itself what they have talked is not news they have talked itself is uh, a news so they would have talked this they have talked, talked that so that is a kind of a privacy issue uh, which is uh, the matter so uh, this is a a mapping user can be mapped to their geographical location so a lot of privacy information here uh, so as we see uh, united states uh, how many people are working india how many people are working europe how many people are working and uh, singapore and other places malaysia how many people are working Sorry. you get a, a variety of attacks and similarly the privacy attacks on blockchain the transaction network can be developed to study the flow of bitcoins in the network so where the bitcoins are coming where the bitcoins are going can be easily found out the user network can be developed to study the ownership and spending patterns of uh, users as well so you you know how much some people are spending how much some people are earning and all these things so there are a lot of uh, privacy attacks and then you can have these uh, uh, using the transaction patterns and the information gathered of the network an adversary can attempt to de-anonymize the users by mapping their bitcoin addresses with real world identities making it pseudo anonymous so maybe uh, you can try to look at which country which uh, place these transactions are coming and these transactions are going based on their physical addresses you can try to uh, make it pseudo anonymous so you can try to get uh, some part of it uh, as an address so similarly you have this transaction network analysis you see the user's address you see the vendor's address so uh, you know all these things are usually uh, these transactions are available and you can easily uh, find out uh, from where to where these transactions are uh, being done so all input addresses belong to the same uh, user as transactions are generated from one source sometimes you can also understand that these are all five addresses but five addresses are of single person because he wants to pay he doesn't have uh, the sufficient money in this account so he he looks at clubs of all these five uh, he pulls all his accounts and make a transaction so you understand that these five are belonging to the same uh, same user and he is sending to somebody else right so that is a kind of uh, these things so you know that next time when these addresses come up they are belonging to the same address right these are some guessworks so the all uh, change addresses and original address belong to the same user so this is how you can uh, try to find out so blockchain uh, 2.0 is also coming up where you have uh, 
the decentralized application. So, uh, uh, notwithstanding, uh, actually, uh, where uh, blockchain is used for cryptocurrency, uh, Ethereum or uh, the blockchain, uh, the Bitcoin core, uh, but then there are other applications which are coming up called decentralized applications, and uh, uh, they are having uh, the other than the uh, cryptocurrencies, the supply chain management, the land registry, healthcare, and many more uh, where the blockchain is used. So, as you see, blockchain use cases, uh, there are so many. I will share the slides with you. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to go into detail of all these, but there are so many ways uh, in which a blockchain is used and you can easily uh, use it at uh, different uh, uh, places, right? It uses in uh, healthcare, uh, uh, you can use a blockchain. It allows for secure recording and sharing of medical information in a ledger. Uh, you can verify the integrity of patients health information which is very important in india we don't bother uh, very much but in uh, us and other countries and europe other countries the health information is very important uh, privacy of uh, somebody's health is very important nobody should know it so that is where it is and you can also perform uh, unchangeable uh, medical audits you can do you can uh, prove the integrity of the clinical results because uh, uh, when the data is transferred from clinical uh, to that so everything can be online the doctor can actually uh, get the data of, from multiple sources and he can see when the patients comes to visit him the doctor gets the entire data so this can be possible if uh, uh, it can be put on blockchain and then uh, the data cannot be uh, mishandled and the data is kept private so only the person uh, when he gives his credentials only he will be able to see that only the doctor can have that right to see that so these kind of mechanisms we can create so we can create the data safety and then uh, at the same time if somebody is uh, making any fraudulent uh, uh, drugs uh, drug dealers like uh, they are spoiling the medicine and they are selling or they are contaminating or they are uh, selling uh, what do you call uh, 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 which, which are modified uh, drugs which are they, they are selling for a cheaper rate so you can easily find out because if somebody gets affected by that you can trace back uh, to who created it and who sold it right so all these things so uh, and then there is an important aspect called smart contract this is how blockchain is getting used now right so uh, you have a code that facilitates verifies or enforces the negotiation or execution of a contract so earlier contracts bond papers and all were contracts but uh, many of these things can be plagiarized and uh, you know forgery can be done on them but now uh, when you create a smart contract on a blockchain it will be difficult so a trusted entity if they run the code it is very easy and Ethereum is one of the decentralized platforms which are running smart contracts. So smart contracts on Ethereum react to external world when poked by transactions. And uh, you can pick up these languages called Solidity and Viper if you are looking at uh, understanding blockchain uh, uh, for uh, other users. So you can build uh, smart contracts using Solidity and uh, Solidity. These are the uh, links. Uh, Solidity is the programming language. So you can have the uh, remix is an editor and then you can uh, code it in uh, visual uh, studio that is uh, visual c++ or uh, c sharp uh, uh, the solidity code looks something similar to that right so this is how a, a, a code looks like so you can uh, create this is a simple coin dot sol a simple smart uh, contract to mint and uh, uh, send coins over cryptocurrency so this is how it looks like so this is a, this is how the solidity code looks like so it's not that difficult maybe looking like python and uh, c++ you can get that there are many vulnerabilities which can and smart contracts are the biggest application of uh, blockchains and uh, they can be caused at uh, contract source code so vulnerabilities there are uh, many vulnerabilities uh, and the cause is also listed so at the evm byte code you can have uh, these are all uh, uh, vulnerabilities which can happen uh, in the blockchain mechanism itself there are some uh, vulnerabilities which can be created uh, the distributed uh, autonomous organization so D अरे ये देखो ये काला खोपरा जो दो दिन से परेशान कर रहा है मैं रात को अपार्टमेंट में कल भी आया था पास फिट करा था भाई ये ठीक है खोपरा तो है ये ऐसे भाग ऐसे ये अपार्टमेंट तो देख रहे हो ऊपर से नीचे तक हां बिड़ी पे बैठा हुआ है ये ये तो है ये तो बहुत डेंजरस है ये तो या अ ओके शैल आई शैल आई कंटिन्यू यस सर 
yeah so there was some disturbance right yeah okay so distributed uh, autonomous organization this is uh, another attack which can happen it's a smart contract deployed in ethereum to implement a crowdfunding platform it raised uh, dollar 150 million but got 60 million uh, stolen right the attacker exploited the re-entrancy vulnerability and uh, uh, they had uh, some simple send functions which were there in ethereum and then uh, they recursively calls it and then uh, so they they uh, generated a lot of money but they lost a lot of money as well because of the vulnerability on ethereum so there are some issues uh, in blockchain as well so the, the earlier uh, people would feel that uh, nothing can be done uh, to a blockchain blockchain is uh, so trustworthy yes it was and uh, the problem uh, that uh, just a minute huh, sir Yes sir, I am office, I am a talk, I am a phone call, I am going to send someone to office. Send someone to office. Yes, yes. Right, so sorry, sorry for that, that is an important call. So, uh, uh, blockchain could not be broken was, was a premise earlier because it is so strong in its uh, cryptographic coding and the algorithm and the and then uh, you also can understand that uh, block blocks number of blocks how fast a block can be created you can't create a block um, uh, in less than 10 minutes it it takes 10 minutes so that is that is a surprising and as the number of uh, bitcoins are increasing uh, maybe suddenly if the speed increases then the complexity of the algorithm changes so um, uh, mining difficulty uh, there's a formula these are all open the mining difficulty uh, i should have included one slide on that mining difficulty changes uh, depending if the time is getting reduced the mining difficulty is increased so the mining difficulty has a formula and automatically you don't nobody has to make any change automatically as the things getting uh, as the blocks are getting uh, generated faster the difficulty becomes uh, increases so obviously uh, it takes more time to get the uh, bitcoins uh, which are generated so you can only uh, it can handle only up to three to seven transactions so ethereum can handle uh, uh, some least slightly more uh, transactions and then uh, there is an inefficient technological design also the number of smart card smart contracts developed uh, on ethereum have vulnerabilities due to their coding energy consuming uh, uh, consensus mechanisms are also there so they consume a lot of energy so if you if i can try to develop a mechanism which will consume less energy if i want to create uh, uh, more bitcoins but uh, how much of energy can i use if i can write an algorithm like that security is uh, an issue uh, a lot of uh, these uh, network level attacks key management attacks uh, privacy issues uh, you know 51% uh, attack and maybe if uh, someday quantum is realizable, right? Uh, till now, ASIC is a challenge, ASIC resistant algorithm, but if the quantum power comes, immediately blockchain can be broken, right? So these are uh, issues which are uh, looking at. So now what, what, what should I do actually, if I want to understand the concept of blockchain, if I want to do research in blockchain, the first step is uh, maybe try to understand uh, how a blockchain looks like, what is a blockchain and all. And then secondly, understand, uh, you know, set up a Bitcoin core. You can set up Bitcoin core, which is the blockchain, basic blockchain is the Bitcoin core. Uh, you can also use Ethereum or you can use, uh, you know, there are uh, uh, so many alternatives of uh, uh, different uh, uh, blockchains. Hyperledger is one more. So uh, you can do that and you can set the directory to store blockchain data and then uh, you can get the transactions. Uh, you can get the transactions uh, set or the memory pool. Uh, you can select the network you want to connect uh, the main network, the test networks and uh, uh, initial DNS entries. Uh, download the entire Bitcoin blockchain and, and try to find out. Right. So this is how and then you can set up a wallet. Uh, you can uh, create a wallet uh, provided by Bitcoin Core. It's like your Paytm wallet or uh, your uh, Uber wallet or anything. Uh, similar Ola wallet. Uh, similarly, you can have a Bitcoin wallet, right? And then uh, the development platforms, other than the blockchain, which is the Bitcoin Core, you have the Ethereum. Ethereum is a decentralized platform which runs uh, smart contracts and then applications that run exactly as programmed without any possibility of downtime, censorship, fraud, third-party interference. All these are possible with uh, with Ethereum, and Ethereum is again a tested thing. But of course, there are some vulnerabilities as we look at. But uh, by and large, uh, this is an open source uh, development environment. So you can uh, have these uh, Ganache, which is uh, the one-click blockchain. Yeah, directly you can uh, download the software and click it. The blockchain will be set up. Uh, you have uh, Ethcore uh, uh, Parity or Solidity is the programming language uh, for that. So these are all part of the Ethereum development framework. 
uh, you have drizzle and truffle and other things so the uh, blockchain id testing uh, in, uh, integrated development environment called truffle or drizzle so these are uh, ethereum so similarly hyperledger which is working very closely with the linux uh, foundation uh, so node js and uh, cloud native computing foundation so they have come together and they have created what is called a hyperledger and you have so many of tools like this right like a big data you have uh, apache uh, you know you have uh, hadoop you have uh, you know, uh, Spark and so many things that come up uh, like that. You have uh, Hyperledger, so many uh, uh, things which are there, frameworks and uh, tools which can be used for different things. So you have to explore. So what I would suggest is either uh, choose Hyperledger or choose Ethereum or choose uh, Bitcoin Core and uh, move on with one of them. And then you can uh, have a, a block stack is another uh, development environment like Ethereum and uh, Hyperledger. It's a new decentralized internet uh, secured by blockchains where users don't need to trust remote servers. So it provides a full stack to developers to build decentralized applications, uh, including services for identity storage and uh, discovery. All these things can be done. So Blockstack is uh, Blockstack is another development platform. So you have also their D app store, uh, which uh, you get some uh, you know again a lot of uh, functions which you can directly uh, install the applications and then you can start using them. So uh, I will stop here uh, and if there's any uh, questions uh, you can uh, continue to ask. I will be available to answer your questions. Thank you, sir. Talk later, talk over This is 2715035 is the number. This is computer science department. We don't have admission information. Yeah, she's looking, but we cannot, we can I don't have data. Right? Five five two seven one five zero three five. You can check it out on the MNIT website, go to admissions, and then you can get the number. 271-5035. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, please. Uh, sir, I have one question. Uh, as I read in the one uh, research paper that uh, the blockchains are uh, having the different types, like uh, private blockchain is also available and public blockchain is also available. So is it uh, valid? Yes, yes. P public blockchain is the Bitcoin core that we are talking about and uh, private blockchain is the Ethereum and uh, uh, the Hyperledger, they are all private blockchains. The public okay. uh, main Bitcoin core. So when you install a Bitcoin core uh, on your system, you get connected to the main blockchain. So the, uh, the main concept of blockchain started with uh, Bitcoin. So the other other uh, blockchains uh, uh, use uh, Ethereum as its own uh, uh, Ripple and all these uh, all these cryptocurrency. They use different blockchains. Okay, and sir, if uh, uh, suppose uh, some companies like TCS, Wipro, and all Infosys. They want to communicate with each other using the blockchain, so they can set up uh, the private blockchain. Yes. Yeah. So in that case, the 51% attack is a uh, very much, uh, very much uh, frequently can occur because there are only three parties are involved in that, and if two parties are on the one side, then 51% uh, attack is a uh, very much uh, easier for this. See, in the case of private blockchain, you are setting it up for your organization or a group of organizations are setting it up so if the organization wants to defeat itself then there is uh, no issue right but in a in a public uh, blockchain uh, there are so many people who are competing so getting a power of 51 percent share in a universal uh, environment like a bitcoin core if you look at there are so many people competing so each 
still be trying to prove uh, that uh, uh, the collaboration should not happen so the algorithms uh, ensure that you cannot uh, defeat it but of course if you if fortunately if uh, 10 or 15 of you can uh, uh, groups can come together that is what pools if you look at now uh, if you look at the list of names of uh, uh, bitcoins which are created they are created by pools so if you look at those pools pools are group of people group of uh, networks coming together some hundred people coming together creating a pool putting all the resources together trying to get the fastest uh, uh, mining uh, uh, solution and then they can uh, do it so in that case, only this uh, uh, Bitcoin can be defeated. Otherwise, each time uh, the, at, a, at one block, there are so many people who propose the blocks and only one block get added. Right? Who adds it? There is no physical person who adds it. It's like internet. How do you get connected to the internet? Nobody is monitoring the internet. They have set up some protocols. They have set up some rules and uh, you have to follow that rule and then you get connected. In a similar sense, to the blockchain, uh, this is this is a build mechanism, but if you want to imitate, create imitations of that, uh, that is a private blockchain, and the private blockchain, uh, Purnima University can set it up, MNIT can set up a blockchain for itself for its application. So if I want to defeat my own application, then uh, there is obviously a chance, but otherwise I will keep it secure, and I will keep the data uh, in a very clear. The, the concept is uh, that it is that the data, entire data is public, but it is not public at the same time. In, in the sense that you don't know uh, how uh, these things can happen. So that is something which you should look at. Uh, I will share the slides uh, to Dr. Dinesh so he can share it with you. Uh, in time. Thank you very much, sir. Really, it was very uh, nice. Uh, question. Sir, one more, one more thing I want to ask. Uh, yeah. Sir, I am, I am uh, currently pursuing the PhD. So I want to do the PhD in the blockchain. So in case I am getting some uh, issues or some guidance from your side. So can I contact with you? Is yeah, yeah sure. you can drop me an email. Uh, I, I have some students working. I will connect them with you. Uh, they will be immediately able to give you some immediate answers. I can also give you. Of course, the response time will be slow. Uh, yeah, don't expect uh, within half an hour I will be able to respond, but I'll try to do. No. Try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, so, can I get your contact details like email ID? It will be there on the MNIT website. Just uh, type uh, Emmanuel Pilli, Computer Science Department, MNIT Jaipur. You'll get my email. It is, uh, I, will, I will type in the chat, espilli.csc at mnit.ac.in. Yeah, please, sir, type it in the chat so I will keep with you. Uh, but don't uh, spam, spam my this thing with uh, so many requests. Okay, I can take only, only few, mnit.ac.in. Thank you, sir. Yes, yeah, sure. Any other queries? Thank you very much, sir, for such a wonderful session. Thank you, sir. Sure. Okay. I log off. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.